throw that riddle at him. He said, ah, there are two people. They all have double professions. I said, yes, it's true. You're smart, like your daddy. Yeah. So we have a historian, historian and lawyer. I said, historian, hey, Alan, I blame you. Historian and lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if you And lawyer and engineer, Theophilus Jumenga. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Let me try to add a junior to it. Yes, that's Theophilus right. Jumenga, Jumenga Junior. Who is that's the senior? Fine. Daddy. He's working in the cemetery. Oh, oh okay. Well, yeah, yeah, daddy, yeah. Yeah. Can you drop the junior? Yes. <laughs> the moment he dies, you the drop junior there. drops. Oh, really? Yeah, that is yes. it. But okay. you that you is. know oh. that if I had dropped the junior, he wouldn't have been asking of daddy today. <laughs> 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 Gentlemen, good morning in your red ties. Mm -hmm. Are there court dates for you today? The way you're all looking snazzy. For me, yes. You're going to court? Yes. How about you, sir? No. You're I'll, going to I'll do some <clears throat> administrative work. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Good to have you all here. Yeah. Pleasure. And um, you know, there's a lot in the news, which we'll dive into shortly. But I just want to find out from you, what's on your mind this morning? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Jimmicka. <clears throat> um, what's on my mind is the National Cathedral issue. Mm -hmm. It appears... I was expecting that the, anything relating to National Cathedral will be clean, very, very clean. But it appears there is scandal after scandal after something after something relating to the cathedral. Mm -hmm. To the extent I'm wondering if really this is the house of God that we are building. Because if it is a, a fetish priest shrine, we'll have such stories because they would like to have it very neat. We have a situation a training a consultancy firm allegedly loans money to the National Cathedral mm -hmm. within a week or two. National Cathedral is able to pay back, and all the people related to the uh, some related to the uh, board of directors or governors of the National Cathedral are the part of the company that is loaning money and all this. I mean, it it it, it sort of saddens me because we went as far as Israel to bring a stone mm. or a piece of rock. The Holy Stone. Eh? The Holy Stone. Mm. I was listening to an advert yesterday about a group going to Jordan to go and baptize, to get baptized in Jordan, and I laughed. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Don't mm. don't be surprised. We went to Israel to bring a, a piece of rock for National Cathedral because that's from the Holy Land. Well, what are finished for Ghana? I mean, the, the baptism people. No, the stone didn't finish oh, for in Ghana too. Ghana. Yeah. Yes, but we went. We want one from the Holy Land okay. that is closer to God. Oh, all right. Small. Okay. Then I mean. We are a joke. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be happening now. That we are all. There should be a bit of candor, particularly from people who are asking others to to cut their hair. They shouldn't be throwing everything at us. There should be a bit of decency, a bit of candor, in the way people who are leading us. Because of the times we find ourselves in, you can't be leading a life of <coughs> let me use the word opulence, um, half truths and truths. I don't want to use the word lying. Etc., and be asking others to be uh, tightening their belt, to be honest, etc. No, it, it saddened me when I read about the petition submitted by the MP for uh, North Town, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Samuel Okujetua Blackwa. Mm -hmm. That's on my mind. It shouldn't be happening now. It's so sad that you are wondering if it is the house of God, if the people on board, on the board, I know there are great men of God, archbishops, bishops. General overseers of various uh, churches that on board, I would have been resigning if I were part of that board. It is something they need to look into and ask themselves whether we are here. You see, Kafi, if you are caught doing something, even let me use the word pilfering or uh, traffic offense, somebody looks at you and says, Kafi too, the person gets disappointed. If it is an ordinary person on the street that is caught um, in a traffic offense, maybe a trottle driver, who say they do it every day? He, they, they are likely to forgive him. So when you see these type of people um, who are supposed to be very clean, rather, let me use the word, superintending or supervising such things, either they are not aware or they are aware and compromise themselves. And we should be asking questions of ourselves to say, is this the time we should be doing that? To me, the answer is glaringly no. We shouldn't. It saddened me. So, and also, let me ask this simple question. Is the cathedral the most important thing we need right now in Ghana, which where we find ourselves? I'll leave that answer to our viewers. Okay. Before I bring in, uh, <coughs> just to let you know that Prophet Victor Kusi Boating, who is at the center of this scandal, is trending um, all over the news portals. I'll give a, a flavor of some of the headlines. Prosecute 
Reverend Kusi Boating over controversial National Cathedral says Ablakwa. Um, 2.6 million CDs refunded to Kusi Boating JNS is not an illegal transaction, says the National Cathedral. God says uh, 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 a video of Prophet Victor Kusi Boating praying for uh, so, so, so for election. Nothing can stop us from building the National Cathedral. So it, 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 he's all over the news, you know. And and I know that uh, as you said, the North Town MP is taking this matter to court. And um, it is in the headlines uh, this morning. So it's, it's a lot of stories around this business of even this reverend, suppose, allegedly having double a double identity. Yes. And I'm hearing justifications that this is his home name. So the Uruja is his home name. Don't and then his, uh, his, his, uh, his <laughs> official name Abrofudin. is... Abrofudin. Yeah, Abrofudin. Yeah, we used to have that his home, home name. Yeah, home name. What's your home name? Your home name is Kafu. Your, your, your I don't have it. Okay, my home name is TK. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so it's all really murky, but it's, it's, it's been taken on. And, and, and uh, Honorable Ablakwa is really on this case. So I saw pictures of him outside the court uh, with, with, his, with his lawyer um, following this whole issue. Uh, concerning the cathedral. I don't know whether um, um, Yanochi yeah, Frimpong um, also has anything to say on this or has other issues to talk about. Well, it will be other issues because I've spoken comprehensively mm -hmm. on the National Cathedral mm -hmm. and I stand at the same place as my learned colleague stands. I don't think I can say anything new. I have repeatedly condemned it. You know, when whatever delegation that went to Israel reached that land, the Holy Land, whether they found Israel having built a national cathedral. All that is there is a small portion of the Solomon Temple, you know, and it is now reduced into a wall, and people call it the Wailing Wall, where tourists go, stand there and pray to their God. I tell you, uh, Jews are among the richest people in the world. If they wanted to build a cathedral, they could afford to build the greatest in the whole world, but they feel that it is of no need. And indeed, the Bible that we read says in all express language that the temple of God is in our hearts, that God is going to dwell in us. So if you are a government that shows that you are dedicated to the cause, you know, that campaign message, the battle is the Lord's. It means you know the Lord, and then God places you there. Then you do not depart from that message, and your message which everybody knows. You're talking about free education, you are talking about one district, one factory, you are talking about one constituency, one million dollars, you are talking about one village, one dam. This is something that every Ghanaian child knows. And you never mentioned a national cathedral. So if you are talking about it today, I believe that it is completely non est And it, should, it is not too late to say, I'm sorry. It's part of the language. And it's in every language, I'm sorry. And you divert it. And then one day, everybody will say that this was a government or a president who had by initiating a project like this. And at a certain time, he changed his mind and it became this or some other way put into a more profitable venture to create jobs for our young people walking about the street as a lawyer. Sometimes I'm in my chambers and then somebody comes in. Sometimes so it is in the church. Please, would you just engage me to be cleaning your office or your car? And then at the end of the month, you give me anything at all, or every day, even if you can give me something to I said, why? He said, I just want people to know that I'm not staying in the house. I'm working. You understand? And then you inquire about the qualification of that person, and he's got a degree or a master's degree, and he's feeling frustrated. If you don't take care, one day people will be committing mass suicide, and then the National Cathedral will still be there. That is what I can say about the National Cathedral. Otherwise, uh, my history, if I could go back. Oh, yes. Yeah, but the first thing I would wish Ghanaians to know, many people didn't know, and I'm so happy that GTV, in fact, it's a blessing that GTV played uh, Jedouble Ambule. In fact, Jedouble Ambule on record was the first person in the world 
the whole world and is officially accepted to have introduced rap into his songs. The first person in the world to have introduced rap music is Ghana's own Jedouble Ambuli, your area second Takrade born. That's it. Then I will talk about, that's just by the way, yes, I will talk one, about like a very famous Ghanaian who died at the tender age of 30, but he made four records, which nobody can take from him. You know, Ameto was just about 37, mm -hmm. you know, and this, so I'm sure that those who were so great would not live here for long. Uh, they die early, and then their names will forever live. Uh, this man is Jacobus Capitain. His full name is Jacobus Eliza Johannes Capitain. He was born in the central region in about 1717, captured at the tender age of about seven as a slave and sold to somebody called Van Gogh, who took him to Holland. And the boy was so brilliant that he was forced to put him to school. At a very early age, this boy indicated his desire to get well educated, to become a theologian, return to Africa to set up a school and evangelize his own people. Indeed, in 1742, May 1742, he completed his studies at the University of Leiden in Holland. And in the public dissertation, he made a record there. It was an infamous record, rather. The first black person to have used his academic writings to defend slavery. He said that was his official degree thesis, that from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible does not condemn slavery. That's his FEG there. His, the title was The Extent to Which Slavery was contrary to Christian freedom. And in it, he defended the fact that from Genesis to Revelation, all the famous people kept slaves. God never condemned slavery, but there's only two obligations upon slave masters. The first one is not to treat slaves with cruelty. Cruelty, don't do that. And the second one is that when the slave is rich enough to buy his freedom, accept it. After this dissertation, as I have said, he became the first black person on paper to have used his academic writings in defense of the enslavement of black people. The second record he made was that he was the first black person ever to have been ordained a Protestant priest. In fact, the first black person to have become a priest was St. Augustine of Hippo, Catholic priest. And that was several centuries before uh, Eliza Jacobus Capitain. So Capitain becomes the second black person to have been a priest, but the first black Protestant priest. Now, when he came back to Ghana, in fact, uh, I would say the Gold Coast, he returned to the Gold Coast, immediately he started the castle school at Sport, uh, St. George Castle in the same year as I have mentioned, uh, 1742 October. And he started reducing the school syllabus, vocabulary, everything into the fancy language. And so became the first person to have reduced portions of the Bible into a local African language. And then two, he was the first African to have started school education. We had it already, the castle schools, but it was for whites and white children and later mulatto children. But this one, he started educating black people to the extent that even the Asantehene Opokuware sent 14 children from Kumasi to be educated in his school. The next record he made over here, as I've already said, was the fact that he introduced school education here in the country. So four records. First black theologian, and then first person to have defended slavery, first African to have done that, and then the vocabulary issue, and then the school issue. Now he started very well, and the Dutch administration at St. George's Castle 
assisted him because they said he they liked his sermons and even in Holland he was a celebrity. Unfortunately for him, as in almost all cases, the white people sat back asking themselves why a black person should preach to us. Two, because of his superior education, his salary was higher than the whites he came to meet in the castle. And so they started hating him. And when he suggested that people were coming from different parts of the country, and so the school should be expanded to include the bodies to school, it was refused. And consciously, they decided to ensure that he would fail. And indeed, he did. And out of frustration and indebtedness, he died at the age of 30 in 1747, having a famous record behind him. Thank you. You're welcome. That's the life and times of Jacobus Elisa Johannes Capitain, 1717 to 1747. Writer, poet, minister, missionary. And thank you very much for that deep dive into history. Should he be celebrated for defending slavery? Should he be celebrated for being the first uh, person of African descent to be ordained as a minister in an established Protestant church? Education, all those things. What are his achievements for you? Are you proud? Uh, do you think, hmm, I don't know. Let us know. 055-556-1034. That's history. It's uh, uh, unvarnished. We say it as, it as it is, and then you draw your conclusions from it. But thank you so much. Uh, for diving into history. Thank you for, very much also for your thoughts on the cathedral. It's the big story uh, in the news, apart from the increase in uh, utility price uh, um, rates that we'll be talking about pretty shortly. But let me just give you a quick inf piece of information. Graphic, Okujeto Ablakwa purchases Shraj to investigate Reverend Kusi Boateng, so the MP for North Tongu. It's in today's graphic, page 17. Uh, he's uh, calling on the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice to investigate the Secretary of the National Cathedral of Board of Trustees, Reverend Victor Kusi Boateng, over conflict of interest, including possession of multiple identities and other alleged criminal dealings. So the petition, which was received by two deputy commissioners of Shraj yesterday, also alleged that there was a transfer of 2.6 million CDs cash from the National Cathedral Secretariat to JNS Talent Center Limited, owned by Reverend Kusi Boating under his secondary identity, Kobna Edu Jim Fee. So that, but the National Cathedral has responded uh, through Dr. Paul Opoku Mensah in a statement which has refuted allegations of corruption and conflict of interest against the secretary to the board by the North Tongue MP. So Dr. Opoku Mensah explains that the said amount which was paid on September 8, 2021, was a loan from a board member whose name he fell short of mentioning. So, this is not a legal payment, Dr. Opoku Mensah stated. Quote, this is a documented trail that you can always ask for verification. If the MP does not understand an issue in the accounting, because in accounting, somebody with an audited account, can, you cannot explain everything, so they call you to clarify. And he says, quote, I really understand the political mistrust in our system, but nonetheless, particularly when it comes from Parliament, you expect a certain due process, and when you're suspicious, you ask for verification and clarification. We have done our utmost to speak to the uh, Executive Director of the National Cathedral, Dr. Paul Pukomensa. He does not want to talk uh, on this issue. Uh, they just put out a statement uh, which basically tries to justify that payment not a word said about the alleged multiple identities, though, uh, which I, seem, I think seems to be also at the crux of this matter. What does the law say about you having two identities? Uh, I have two lawyers here. Is it legal? Oh, oh definitely. You must have one identity mm -hmm. unless it is official. If it is for normal purposes, then you don't have any problem. Somebody can have two identities, and I can explain. <clears throat> if you have, uh, let's say you are a chief, a paramount chief, mm -hmm. like in the case of the Domahini, mm -hmm. you know, he's called Osage for Ajiman Bedu. That is the stool name. Mm. Then he has an official name that is the ordinary name, uh, Justice something Mensa. He was my classmate that I've forgotten the first name. Mm -hmm. He was called Justice Mensa, and he still uses the Justice mm -hmm. Mensa. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong about that. Mm -hmm. And then there are several people with long names and they would only want to be remembered or 
officially known for just a portion of it. Mm. One of them is the president of this country. Mm -hmm. His name contains William, yes. and he doesn't use it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cletus experienced Kofi Kumado. Mm -hmm. He doesn't use the Cletus. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fui S. Chikata. Mm -hmm. He never uses the full, I mean, he does, never want anybody to know what the S stands for. Mm -hmm. And you cannot begrudge him. So that it is like that. And there is nothing wrong about that, depending on what you are, you are using it for. But in the case of having two identities where it can be found that the intention is to commit a crime, that is to say, to forge a document or anything that is criminal. That is where you are in trouble. But somebody can decide to use two identities, as in the case of Doma Hina, which he is using all the time. Mm. Yes, or, or when he sits as a judge, he's not Doma Hina, and they, they don't pay him at the end of the month as Osaji Fosi Adio Yuachiman Bedu. It's just Mensa. But when he goes to wherever he's a chief, then the other one comes here, and then the explanation I've given. I wonder what, what would be his pass. What would be the name on his passport when you have these double double identities? I, I believe that it would be the name. one he has always been using before he understood. Okay. How, how about uh, having documents which show two different dates of birth, as uh, uh, Mr. Kujito is 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 is, 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 is uh, alleging in his investigation? He has shown uh, documents, passports, driver's licenses with the same person, two different dates of birth. That is, uh, I would think that is criminal in nature. Mm. However, to add to what Senior has said, when someone has uh, a couple of names or two identities, mm. the person will be um, making a statutory declaration, uh, which normally people would just say an affidavit, mm. to say that I am Theophilus K. Jimega. Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to be known as T.K. Jimega, mm -hmm. or I am also known as T.K. Jimega. Mm -hmm. The the T.K. Jimega and Theophilus Jimega refer to the same person, and all former documents bearing T.K. Jimega are valid as far as Theophilus Jimega is concerned. Then you can go forward to gazette it, get it published properly. Mm -hmm. You are covered. Not just tomorrow morning you wake up, I am this way, another day I am that way. But... To have two different dates, dates of birth. birth, that is completely different from uh, having just two identities. And the purpose for having the two different dates of birth, as one will expect, is to use it to commit a crime. Always. All the it, time. It is, it is not for the fancy of it. So, uh, again, for somebody who goes by the title, a reverend, to allegedly have two different identities, and two different date of births. That to me, again, apart from legal, morally, will be disturbing to a lot of people. And he shouldn't be at a place where we are we are all championing to be the holiest site we are going to have in Ghana. <laughs> he shouldn't have even, as I said, if it's uh, near a fetish shrine, he would have been asked to cleanse himself by now or to cleanse the shrine by now. But, I mean, the basis of the uh, Christianity is all about forgiveness and love. So you'll be forgiven and we move on. But why do you think the National Sec uh, uh, Cathedral Secretariat is silent on the identities and date of birth issue? I mean, in their response, they just spoke about. No, okay, well, I think, I think they are silent because they feel that is a personal matter for the uh, Reverend to deal with. But the money part, it comes to the National Cathedral properly, so called. So they would like to respond to that. But for the. Um, uh, name they would like him to deal with it, but again, you see, uh, to draw uh, uh, inference from recently, the national service director from Ashanti region who was uh, suspended, mm -hmm. they said he roped in the name of the national service scheme. That is why they took the ma they, they they were interested mm -hmm. in the matter. Mm -hmm. If he had gone there and just had the blah 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 and gone home, they would. But when he said, "I am the regional director." Mm -hmm. That is when they said, oh, our name has been brought in. Yep. This man is not going by just Reverend Kusi by himself. He's going by the name and the board member of the National Cathedral. The secretary. So, actually. secretary. Mm -hmm. so they should be interested in, because their names, you can't uh, uh, divorce the, the man from the cathedral thing. Again, is it not time we put a stop to this cathedral and uh, move on to something else? All right. So so you can check out on this, on, on our, uh, on, on looking at,
the documents that are out there. So you have a, uh, the man's uh, passport, details there, Kwabna Yudu, JV. There's a date of birth there, 30th December 1969. And then you have the same person with a different name, allegedly, by the, uh, what uh, the investigations are, and date of birth is different. And so um, I'm sure the law will have, will have a look at this and see exactly what it's all about, I, yes. I, I guess. By now, someone should be inviting him for conversation. Mm -hmm. we, it, it's all already in the public domain. But I think that, um, I don't know why the lawyers went to Shiraj first. You think they should have gone straight to court? They should yeah, have when gone it to comes the police. to conflict of interest, mm -hmm. maybe you go to, uh, to shrug, and then administrative yes. decisions. Oh, maybe that's why but they the criminal went. aspect of yes. it should be packaged for yeah, a different for place. Yes. Okay. So does charge have the powers of a court? No, no. not always. Just in terms of uh, no, they don't have the powers, the powers of, of a court, court. because okay. whatever decision they take, they would have to go to the high court to enforce it. So they don't have the powers of a court. It's only an administrative okay. body. Okay. Yes. So um, we, we're also reading in uh, Mr. Okujetu's uh, petition that the, the man also, the, the, the Reverend or Mr. Mr. Rijen Fee, whichever, also has a diplomatic passport. I mean, what qualifies someone to have a diplomatic passport? You see, I think that the, he would have the diplomatic passport. Is, is he a diplomat? No, not everybody who is a diplomat mm -hmm. is uh, uh, owns uh, Not everybody who owns the who has the diplomatic passport is a diplomat. So why do you give a diplomatic passport to somebody who is not a diplomat? Yeah, there are, there are members of parliament who also have a diplomatic passport. There are others who work in various, maybe office of the president. Is this standard cetera. practice all around the world? Do you have MPs in other countries who also have, who also have diplomatic passports? Definitely, no. yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, when at a certain level, certain people travel a lot, and they are not supposed to join queues and do things that would actually affect the work they are doing. Why not? Oh, for example, uh, the, the president queue. of Ghana Football oh. Association, uh, majority leader, minority the GFA leader. The president has a diplomatic passport? He, definitely. Why? Because, oh, but you always be attending conferences here and there. Does he travel every month? He, it may be within a certain season he will be going to about are, 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 are we not abusing this this privilege uh, where yeah, everybody, everybody gets up and can uh, get a, have a diplomatic passport this is why we are where we are right it is now another thing, but <laughs> yeah. definitely the concept behind it mm. helps everybody because mm. when i don't have it anytime i would want to go to any country outside the ECOWAS, you know the procedure i have to go through it may be that your government needs you a lot because of what you are doing apart from being a diplomat your work is like that of a diplomat and so it is catered for people like that that as soon as they pick their passport they can travel anywhere just because they are serving their country and it can be u.s it can be ghana it can be any country if the concession is given mm. that apart from diplomats people like that should also be an, uh, aided mm. to travel expeditiously okay all right well those are the issues we'll see how shra deals with this matter but uh, that is what we are dealing with this morning okuji to a black petitions charge to investigate reverend kusi boating over issues of conflict of interest and other matters um related to the national cup serial your thoughts zero five 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 six ten thirty four there's a lot of big story it has to do with money okay so uh, utility tariffs are up going up by the 1st of February, almost 30% for electricity, and just over 8% for water. That's the big story. It's everywhere. Uh, I'll read a little bit of that for you. So PURC, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, um, has announced an upward review of electricity and water tariffs for the first quarter of this year, taking effect on the 1st of February. Uh, electricity up by 29.96% across board for all customers. Water will increase by 8.3%. Uh, Commission, however, um, ha approved varying rate adjustments, including some reductions for selected industrial and commercial consumers as part of the ongoing restructuring of the existing water rate. So uh, they are talking about the exchange rate volatility, so the way our CD has been dancing uh, uh, bo -bo -bo with the dollar, rising inflation, uh, generation mix, and weighted average cost of natural gas. We'll be getting some um, education on this uh, in a short while, but uh, what do you make of all of this? Yeah, um, Mr. Again, Jr. Again, <laughs> again, I ask uh, to increase all these tariffs. There are other parts. What savings are we making? 
there are leakages that we have not accounted for. The, for example, if you take water, there will be none uh, accounted for water that is as a result of stealing, pilfering people taking water. There will be water due, uh, loss due to leakage uh, that can be accounted for. What savings are we making? Are we making um, efforts to, to close those gaps? Now, for the uh, electricity part, we have been told in this country before that we have uh, distribution losses. What are we doing to plug those uh, holes? Perhaps if you are able to uh, uh, check all those losses, the tariffs will not uh, have been going up. We will make a lot of savings. Again, we don't have plans of water resources, electricity that everybody can look up to and query and uh, make input. So we just wake up and we uh, increase prices. Again, we are talking about dollar. Everything they are talking about is about dollar, the chemicals, etc. Dollar, dollar, inflation. So tomorrow, if the dollar goes to 20 cities, we are going to have another uh, adjustment of uh, fees. But salaries are the same. Our income is the same. So where does the government come in to cushion the people? These are social services. They are not services that the people can live without. Everybody needs water. Everybody needs electricity. But what are our plans as a, as a country or as a nation to show up and support people? We need to come and answer those questions. So, Mr. Frippo, you're going to pay more for, for power and water? Yeah. But, so he studied some time ago here that ECG itself does not deny the fact that millions of Ghana cities, you know, every year go down the drain because of pilfering. So I believe that we should concentrate more on ensuring that people do not do illegal connections. And most of these are not even done by small people, individuals, but by even companies, you understand? So it's a lot of money that could otherwise had accrued to the ECG. And I believe that if they are able to concentrate on that one, there would not be any need whatsoever to increase the tariffs. As we speak now, you know, how many people would be capable of going by it? At the same time, it is a utility. You can't live without it. So I wish that the authorities would rather uh, reverse the whole decision and then find a way of using it as a national service. Why national service? To ensure that from Cape Three Points to Kulungugu, the state would ensure that whatever that goes away in terms of thievery, pilfering, would be guarded and saved for the benefit of everybody. You're watching GTV Breakfast. My name is Kafui Day. My guest, uh, Yao Anochi Frimpo, um, and uh, Theophilus K. Jumega Jr., uh, um, Robert Kafui Kofi Chachu Day. My home name and my Christian name, <laughs> they're all there, <laughs> full identity. Same on my passport. I, have, I, was, I was born once, so I have one identity. <laughs> okay, listen, a Vodafone uh, and some money, it's, 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 a, it's a whole money issue thing. So um, apparently, the government has granted a conditional approval for sale of Vodafone Ghana uh, to Telesel Group. So 70% of Vodafone Ghana shares are, are being transferred to a company called Telesel. NCA has given a conditional appro approval for this transfer. And it's subject to concessions made by Telesel Group and representations made to NCA. So, uh, Vodafone Ghana shares are held by Vodafone International Holdings BV. And in January last year, NCA received an application from Vodafone Ghana for the transfer of 70% of its majority shares held by its mother company to Telesel. Um, and so, NCA has now approved this, this um, transaction to to go um, ahead. I was having a really interesting conversation on my Vanda platform about how Ghanaian companies own, own virtually nothing of strategic areas of our economy, like banking, like mining, like telecoms, you know? And to think that at a point in time, we had Ghana Telecom, yeah. and then it was sold off to Vodafone. And we now have a, an issue where Foreign telcos are in charge, really. I, mean, I think there was Westel. Yes. Before yeah, Vodafone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
so so uh, there's a there's a tax thing going on stop. with MTN yeah. right now. Stop. Yes, yeah. And so so MTN, MTN between MTN and Vodafone, you are you're over that's over ninety percent of, of market share, mm -hmm. you know. And we we don't we don't control much. And I was just I went and read about what was happening in South Africa. Uh, just to find out whether foreigners are also dominating their telco se sector like no. that. There are four players in South Africa. Three of them are South, Af are South African. Number two, number three, number four. Number two, number three, number four. If you add it together, they own over 50, per 50, 50 something percent of, of. So they're in a dominant position. Mm -hmm. We don't have that dominant position. I mean, it was sold off in 2003. Uh, Ghana Telecom, and I see cable, everything went off to uh, foreigners. And uh, another international transaction is happening again. Uh, Seventy percent shares of Vodafone uh, going to Telecel. Um, yes, uh, international company, uh, African, yeah, but not a Ghanaian company. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, One, are our Ghanaian citizens ready? Have they positioned themselves to be partakers in this meal? Government can support them. I remember yes, when Kia and Samsung were coming up, they were small players. Yes. And uh, competing so, against Volkswagen just, just, and Ford. Just, let, 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 let me learn. First, you need, yeah. to, you need to position yourself. I mean, we have been taught that shadow forms when light uh, is thrown on an object. If there's no object, there, no shadow will be formed. So first, you need to position yourself for the government to support you. Number two, does the government throw this to the citizens to also participate in it? Or before you are aware, somebody has come in to say that we are we are the one buying the Vodafone or any asset. I, I hope you are getting mm, my, right my, my yeah. uh, uh, argument. It's a two-way two street. Two-way two thing. Then the third one is, these are strategic national assets or issues that we need to look at. Um, and when they come in, you will tell me that Vodafone, having been established as Ghana Telecom and Westel or Westec earlier, would have been the most dominant player in Ghana by now. But I don't think they have invested so much into, the, into what they have come to meet f to make them the number one choice. I don't think they are the most, the, the dominant player the in Ghana. Is MTN. Yes, by MTN far. Is, yes, by far. Mm. So it means that somebody comes in, what they, they meet, they try to make profit out of what they meet, and they move on. And that is going to happen. And sometimes a lot of our companies, that you will find out that this same Vodafone and Telcel, etc., might have the same sort of personnel or persons behind these two companies or another company is just a change of ownership so that they will have they will enjoy the tax break by the time they enjoy the tax break and they are having their uh, profits and start to pay tax then somebody else buys it and etc again perhaps we have diversified a number of companies during the Ronley's era i don't believe that a number of them will just take it forever there might be days that we are saying give us back or you've used it for 10 years We'll have it after 10 years. Revert back to? To us. Mm -hmm. Is anybody checking those things? Perhaps no. There will be a number of companies that we have sold off. We have all gone to bed and nobody checks whether they will revert to us one day. And we lose them forever. And by the time, I mean, people are dying, etc. But the documentation should be there. And we should have a secretariat that will check all the assets we have diversified, all the companies, to see that were they total diversification gone forever? or there are reversionary interests that we need to have. Mm. Those things too are missing. But the bigger picture is we as a people, we, our laissez-faire attitude. That's how we have been. What do we own, my brother? <laughs> yeah, so we, as at now, I have a friend, uh, 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 a chief from Huawei, Togwe Ajima. He says anything that has Ghana attached to it does not function well, so they have to sell it. So he's... Yes, we he reject gave, that. Yes, Respectfully so, to talk so, so about he Ghana said, television. We, we are working well. Well, well, maybe no. Ghana, you want us to go back there. You have woken up. You have you have revived Ghana Television. Google Cafe Day, and you see that one of the things attached to your name is reviving Ghana Television. Big team here. Yes. Doing a good job. Yes. So. So please tell me that we're back. You are taking Ghana Television out, 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 out of out of that. Business. So back to the, the the main issue. So one, we need to position ourselves. Government need to support the in, uh, uh, local local guys. But you see, people are afraid, are scared too. If I'm in government and I support you to be very rich, perhaps you'll be supporting my opponent next time to uh, to, to kick me out, out of power. Okay, so, right. we'll, so that's why I'm saying that part of it is our 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 attitude right. as a nation. Okay. That also comes to play. So we need to change our attitudes. We need to change our attitudes. Right. And position ourselves. Okay. You see, uh, we are currently looking for three billion from IMF. Mm. I mean, can't we have a situation where 
Ghanaians can pull resources and, 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 and say that. Money. Yes. Yeah. But you see, we have had situations, I think South Korea, etc., where people even take out their the gold filings, the gold filings and, 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 and give it to government, their, their earrings, their wedding rings, etc. Because et they trusted the government. Yes, <laughs> because the government created a situation for them to trust the government. Mm -hmm. That again comes to the way I'm talking about that we have candor. Mm. We are talking about people tightening their belts. We have not heard about reduction in government expenditure. Yeah. We have not heard for all these people are talking about it and nobody seems to care. Assuming that the president today says that I am practically cutting down my government expenditure and the personnel by 50% tomorrow morning. Kaffee, if they say we should all contribute a city to help the nation, we will all do. But we don't do it. So we need that candle. Kind of. Yes. Okay. So from one red tied gentleman to another, um, Vodafone to Telcel. Oh, I think he has comprehensively spoken mm. about it. But what I would. Are you happy? I, no, I'm not happy because I did some cases involving some of these state entities mm -hmm. divested. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered that one government divest with, let's say, 20 years, so that uh, after that period, the thing will revert to the state. Mm -hmm. And then the government that comes also sells it away. So that's what it has been. So always you will see that it is for a considerably short period of time. The only thing is that instead of the government redeeming it, it's ready to dispose of it. But my worry is that for as long as all your strategic entities are in the hands of foreigners, then your country is a neo-colonial state. You know, all its affairs are discussed outside. And that is very dangerous for any country. I believe that the time has come for the state to buy back all its strategic assets so that Ghana will be a country. And then another point we should look very closely is that uh, MTN. It didn't start as MTN. No. You know, I remember one of his name was Ariba. Yes. You know, this... Uh, for space phone, space phone, space phone, Ariba, space phone, Ariba, yes, Ariba, Ariba MTN. Yes. You see, mm -hmm. w the moment you purchase the entity, you you are able to enjoy tax holidays, mm -hmm. so they would enjoy it and then begin paying tax for some time. Then they will go outside, form a new company or a sister company, give it to it, and this one to move to another country. That is the way they are playing, and it is up to us to begin to be smart. Yeah. Otherwise, they will continue to do that. How come they don't come and purchase Accra has a folk or Kotoko? You understand? No, they would never do that. They want something very, very juicy. And strategic. Highly strategic. Mm. Something that brings in millions of dollars yeah, almost every yeah, yeah. day. Yes. And, and, and telcos are the, the industry of the future. Yeah. Everything is happening on our phones. Yes. And they you know, they also don't like even putting down real assets mm. that's what yeah, I everything is tight yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. tomorrow yeah. if they want to go they leave you yes. and go yes, sir, i used to work in the shipping company and we used to provide logistics uh, it was a big, big group international group where we used to provide vehicles and, and, and set up people's offices they never owned these huge uh, mining companies uh, oil companies they didn't own jack no vehicles were all leased yeah uh, office uh, office equipment Least office, office accommodation, itself, least. Yes, I mean, yeah. you can leave tomorrow. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can leave tomorrow. All their yeah. cars, 100, 200, four wheel drives. Yeah. You are just paying your, All your money. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Trucks, so, everything. Everything's leased. Yeah. But the, the bigger question is if these companies are doing this and are making money, mm -hmm. why can't the government do it and we make, make money, money yeah. for Ghana? I, mean, I, look, I, look, I look at Nigeria and you have Globacom, yeah. who is a major yeah. player. Adenuka. Yes, it's a major player there, yeah. you know, and so. They, they have a share over 20 something percent, yeah. uh, over a quarter of their telco market is by, from a Ghanaian, uh, Nigerian, Nigerian. Nigerian. indigent, yeah. you know, and it helps. Yeah. You, you give competition to the, to the, 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 the multinationals. Yeah. I'm going to read messages shortly, but uh, there was an extension of a deadline. And when the, the deadline came, uh, I said I could have just been a prophet. I could have prophesied that this deadline was going to extend it. The debt exchange uh, deadline was extended from yesterday to the end of this month. It just happened with the re-registration issue. You know, they will set a deadline, they will extend it. Even uh, Momo uh, conversations, there was E-level conversations, there were extensions upon extensions, and the same justification has been given again, that we're extending this uh, deadline for further consultation. It always beats my mind why, why the further consultation always happens after the probably the decision has been taken, and then there's pushback, and then now 
uh, government has to go back for further further further, further um, consultation. consultation. So the government has extended the domestic domestic debt exchange deadline. Uh, they say to build consensus. It's on page uh, front page of today's Times. Continues on page twenty. And they said building consensus is the key to a successful economic re recovery for Ghana. And so they uh, want to exchange our, our bonds for, uh, they want us to voluntarily exchange approximately 137 billion CDs worth of domestic notes and bonds um, for a package of new bonds. Um, and there's a lot of pushback against that. You have organizations, Ghana Individual Bondholders uh, Forum, who say they are reacting to, to the extension of the deadline. They say it's welcome, but insist that the group would push for the exemption of individual bondholders in the debt exchange program. Government must look within, because we as individuals in the general citizens have taken a big share of the pie. We've been at the receiving end of the raw deal of governance every single time. We're open to meet and look forward to that end quote from uh, Senor Hosi, former chief executive officer of the Ghana Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors, uh, who is now one of the leading conveners of the Ghana Individual Bondholders Forum. There was a, a, um, uh, an interaction by the minority yesterday calling for broader consultation on the domestic debt exchange program. Let's take a little bit of that uh, conversation, that uh, press conference, and uh, we'll get comments from my guests and we'll read your messages. This is GTV Breakfast, minority eating at, uh, taking a bite at the debt exchange program conversation. Can they be trusted? <laughs> and are they to be believed? No. And can they be relied on? No. Again, they are words. The failure of the Nanado Baumia government to fully engage the relevant stakeholders on the debt exchange program has led us to total confusion, rejection, disapproval of the initiative. The debt exchange program is a risk, major risk, to financial institutions and to insurance companies and now extended to individual bondholders. Our banks and other financial institutions are still reeling after the infamous financial sector bailout. The debt exchange program will further exacerbate the already perilous financial sector that we have in Ghana. They offer employment, they provide support to the private sector, and they provide support to businesses. This is at risk. The last thing Ghanaians want is a total collapse of the financial sector by a government which went haywire on a borrowing spree. The future sustainability of our insurance companies cannot be guaranteed under this poorly crafted debt exchange program. It is on this call that we in the NDC, the minority group, calls on President Nana Adudankwa to immediately suspend the ongoing debt exchange program. It is already failing and promises to be a failure. He should suspend the initiative and engage in deeper consultation and allow for greater transparency in the initiation, adoption, and acceptance of whatever remedies we collectively may agree to in order to save Ghana's economy. We will embark on a nationwide roadshow to foster deeper understanding of what they are doing. Watching a video yesterday on uh, um, from City ninety seven point three FM, looking at the, just the sheer number of people who are responsible for government communication. So many specialists and consultants, and how have they able been able to so poorly communicate this debt exchange program to the people of Ghana? I mean, I'm, I'm listening to Twitter Spaces, and I'm getting better education from political actors who put up aside their political hats and were just breaking down what this whole debt exchange thing yeah, means. Yeah, he, he explains yes. it. Yes, yeah, yeah Beatrice Anna, I had visited Beatrice Anna and Alex Mould on a Twitter space two days ago. And for two hours, I couldn't go. I was just listening. Everything was broken down really, really well. 
I don't, you don't hear anything from you, know, you get hardly anything from the government just telling you that okay it's voluntary and this is what we want to do and we, you don't hear it broken down and now the minority will take charge they say they are going on a road show, road show now. to explain to people isn't government losing the initiative in, in, in communicating this thing to, to, to Ghanaians and convincing us that this is something that we should be doing? I think uh, the direct answer is yes. They, not they are losing it, they've lost it. I think the understanding of consultation is we call you to say this is what we have. You take it or you leave it. And this is not the first time the government has gone on with a policy or a project and realized that they need to come back and talk to people more. It has happened before. And I believe this will not be the last time it will happen again. But the bigger picture is that the government is aware that you have very little option. In effect, I, I would say you can't do anything. Yeah. That is the attitude. You can't do anything. So let us do it. You see, previously, uh, they would have used other terms, but they are a bit sensitive now. But their posture and everything tells you you can't do anything. This debt exchange program, I don't know whether you listened to lawyer Jage the last time. He said he's 65. His family, nobody has ever crossed 80. And the, you are telling him that his money will be available in 15 years. <laughs> that means he'll he will be ready to take his money when he's ready to die. When he's dead. Mm -hmm. Literally. He's being realistic. And within now and the 15 years, you are telling him, perhaps, get pure water and drink every day. I mean, and these are people, you see, the effect of this is not only for today. Tomorrow, it will be difficult for you to tell people to invest in government bond because they will refer you to this day. Mm. So, and government bonds are part of the uh, structures we use to control inflation. So when you feel that there's too much money in the system, the treasury bills, the bonds, etc., so that you take some of the money out of the system. So you can use that effectively. Additionally, much as we are talking about government is a continuum, etc., what if in 10 years' time another government comes and they are like, hold on, what you, the agreement you went with these guys, we don't want to take it today. We also want to extend it another 10 years. Another 10 years. There's so much murky situation. Again, they are not as displaying the candor if we are looking for money to pay people and we are thinking about building a cathedral which will cost this year alone about give and take five million that could have paid some people so let us look at let us reprioritize our needs where can we find this 137 billion that they want us to exchange no the money is not there it's not just he can't pay the day there's no sicker there. The money is not there. Gamelio. A Gamelio Gavola. Evo. Evo. There's money. The money is not there. That is the very but reason. How can money get finished? It gets finished. You when know you are... create it. No, you know. No, you see, you have a limit to which you if you create too much money and you are printing, we'll get to the Zimbabwe situation. Where to go and buy bread, you have to carry the money in a, a wheelchair, a wheelbarrow to go and buy bread. We don't want to get to that situation. What is going to happen is that the debt exchange, if they don't accept it, it is bad. If they accept it, it is bad. But it appears that both parties are in a, they have all adopted entrenched positions. Which parties? The government, government. and the holders of the uh, individual bonds. The bonds, yes. Not only the individual ones. Bond the bond banks bond. are also bond. parts. Yeah. And they all invest in all this. So if the uh, remember, for example, the banks, they have uh, uh, debts that people are not paying back. Mm. That's bad, it. bad loans. Bad loans, etc. And now you are, your main source of investment is also going. And a number of our banks, I don't know which of them is indigenous, apart from ADB and uh, ADB, NIB, and Ghana Commercial Bank. It's the strategic thing we we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so all the rest are foreign owned. Uh -huh. And gradually, Ghana will no longer become the destination for investment. And people will not trust you. So we need to sit down properly with the it is not give take it or we are giving you a deadline of 30th or 31st january to come on no that's not consultation that's not negotiation yes you can say the negotiation cannot drag on forever but shall we be looking at 31st 
it is not an opportunity for you to sign on to it by 31st or we are moving on. The train will go to the next destination. It will happen that way. Again, I am scared that when you go to court, you win against the government. Then the government says, okay, this is our proposal of paying you. They can stretch it. Eh? They will stretch That's it. What they have always been doing. <laughs> Who stretch it? Then, way then, out, then you, you, you go to court, then you have obtained victory. That is hollow. It's a period victory. Yes. So, so, I mean, so what's, the, what's the way out? How, how, how does government get money? The first one I've said. Uh, cut down. Cut down on okay, government okay, expenditure. Okay, okay. There are some SOEs who have like three or four deputy chief executives. We have the Keta port that is functioning without an MD. It will be an MD without a port. There's staff being paid for Keta port. There's no port at Keta now. But we have an MD which is being paid. Check it out, Kafri. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know. I'm aware of it. Yeah. Yes. G Ghana Oil Hub. Yes. I mean, Oil Hub Corporation or company in the Jomoro district. Yeah. You know, there's nothing on the ground, yeah. but it has got a board. And the chairman is the Omahini of Jomoro. What is his name? Uh, Nana uh, AJ, uh, Ulai AJ. Is there. It's a board without a company. Uh, well, there, 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 there is a board, and it's like functioning in practice. There is nothing on the ground. How Just do they, to, is it Zoom meetings or how do they meet? Whatever they do, <laughs> whatever they do, it is the taxpayers' money, money that is yeah, going away. Yeah. So the other day, I read on social media that the company had given out a Land Cruiser to its board chairman. You know, a Ulai, a J, mm. and you think it is good for this country. When in practice, we don't see anything, and indeed, there is nothing, as the case of this Keta Port. issue, just as the Enzema one. Mm. Okay. So, but me, I believe that uh, you ask a question, you ask him a question, what is the way out? Yeah, what's the way out? See, I was some thinking. Let's give government some solutions. That, uh, <laughs> if the vice president, mm -hmm. A giant in finance and economics. Yes. And then the Minister for Finance mm. with all his deputies and all those who are finance experts in the government. You know, if they were writing an essay in an examination mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and were asked the question, what is the alternative to a debt exchange program mm -hmm. for a highly indebted country such as Ghana? I believe that none of them we sit down and fail the examination. You understand? They would call for so many papers. More paper. Giving so many solutions on paper. Yeah. So are you saying that what without IMF, Ghana will collapse as a nation state? Mm -hmm. Two, without such a conditionality as we are having now, it's a rippling effect of the three billion they needed from IMF. And the question is that this thing started about a year ago, and people were thinking that if the government did not receive the three billion at that time, within a couple of months, the economy was going to collapse. Are you impressed with solutions from the, the opposition as the MPP? As the no, I believe that no, solution, that they don't have any solution. How do you say instead of asking them to drop the whole idea and give them alternative? And I have the yeah, going on a ratio, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're going on ratio to explain the things to people. What are you talking about? You see, it is so basic. You don't need to go to school to know all this. Our fathers, grandfathers, and grandmothers who put us to school, they did just one thing. You know, they were farmers. They were farmers. You know, and very, very peasant family. Because why were they farmers? It was the only thing they knew. Why was it the only thing they knew? It was the only thing God gave them. And God has given you this vast area of land. You understand? And you decide rather to be a dollar economy. No, you should be an agri economy. And you wouldn't need to talk about big language like debt exchange program. Never. On that note, let's go check our messages out right here on GTV Breakfast, 055-556-1034. Uh, um, we don't necessarily associate with any messages that are coming from. These are your views. We are giving you a platform to air your views. You know the rules. Just be civil, courteous, and full of decorum. White Romeo, I just realized today, Kafui, that uh, government also gave you a new haircut. No. My haircut comes from, not government, but Ganyu. Ganyu is my barber. And he gave me a haircut on the last day of 2022. I entered the new year bald. So please, don't give the government credit for my haircut. 
So please ask the lawyer why he's just believing the newspaper story on the cathedral. It's very sad. When President Kufour was building the Jubilee House, NDC in their cohort said the worst thing that it would be used for poultry farming and they were the first to occupy the same Jubilee House today. Uh, uh, today it's about a cathedral and the NDC and their cohorts are pouring scorn about watch out, they'll be the first to enter for Thanksgiving. All right. That's no, you should. <clears throat> let's correct him. Yes. The Jubilee House was an Indian government project. Mm. It's not President not... Kufour, but it was built during the era of President Kufour. Uh, Indian. Indian money. It's true. Mr. J.D. Blay Ambele is the real father of rap, followed by Dillinger, Dillinger and Uroy. Oh, I love Uroy. Hello, Calf. Please tell me not that building the cathedral is no mistake. If there are issues with the process, let's condemn it rather than the wholesale Jeez. condemnation. Musa Abatwa. Any government who wants to build the capacity of its people won't spend $58 million to build a cathedral and spend $25 million uh, cities to, col to collapse 465 indigenous banks. I urge true men of God to recuse themselves from the board of the National Cathedral because some people will have a lot of questions to answer when MPP is out of office come 2024. Inshallah, says Musa Abatua there, who has uh, a picture of him and the former president <laughs> on his DP. Calf, this National Cathedral thing always irritates me hearing of it. Nobody should contribute even one CD to the project. I prefer La General Hospital to National Cathedral. Reverend Professor Joyce, I should not destroy her reputation with this cathedral thing, you say. Yeah, say no this government has disappointed us. Joseph Akwe, Kaf, I totally agree with Mr. Report that J. Dublay is a pioneer of rap music. However, after his recording, uh, the Simigua do, it was banned on GBC for profanity. We are our own enemies. Ni Akwe, North Kaneshi. So some musical stuff is going on here. Um... Uh, Kavi, today your show is a purely NDC show. I don't think uh, Mr. Anochi is an NDC member. But are uh, you an NDC? And, <laughs> and neither am I. <laughs> so call lawyers who don't hear the other side of the story and make judgment. It's a shame to you. By the way, Blackwell has never won any case before. Why are you personalizing the uh, issue? Uh, please, I'm not an NDC. Thank you. No, I know you are a lawyer. Kavi, I am, I am fully NDC. Okay, all right. Yes. So those are the declarations. Yes, I'm fully, I'm fully, fully NDC <laughs> and, and will be contesting what I sit. Okay, we have a declaration here. Yeah. All right. I'm GTV. But what you have spoken today... <laughs> Does not represent no, 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 but <laughs> I'm fully GTV. Uh, the most interesting thing I have seen in Ghana is that you're going to find some people still supporting this useless and well, keep your language separate, man. I don't want to be reading stuff like that. Regards to Honorable Alan Chapert, Chairman, I think the next president, you say, you say Ghanaians should not lose hope in MPP because Alan Cash will lead the MPP since they are working on policies to make life easier for Ghanaians. All right, Vincent Dodu, Capitaine was not great by any standard. He was a complete opposite of Amu. Yeah. He, uh, he, di he died as a drunkard? I don't know. I know he died poor. Unlike Amu, he did not know his family name, Vincent Dodu. Do, Vincent do, do. All right. We're getting, anyway, we're getting angles. Yes. I'm surprised that none of the clergymen who have found loud voices in support of the cathedral have found the lowest of voice to advocate for the building of the Ligena Hospital. I don't want to believe that they are of the view that the cathedral solves all. Uh, solves. All individual hold bondholders must resist government. Uh, okay. Kalen Nanaya Royal. Mm. Okay, you've made, you think the breakfast show is very interesting. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Go on, GTV breakfast show. AK from Dema. The everyday problem with National Cathedral trustees and funds. I mean, do these trustees and no, no, I don't think government, government. This this block is my town school. KG KG one block. Uh, you think that the cathedral can f solve a, a thousand of these problems? This is a KG one. Uh, please give us the name of the town. All right. So you mentioned it. Yeah, you said Dema. Oh Dema. Dema. Okay. Dema. Oh Dema. Where, where is this? That we have them in Ashanti. Okay. Yeah, I have where we are. We have them. Uh, all right. Demma. So that's a kindergarten uh, for uh, the children of the future. New arrivals. Why is this government keep, keep killing Ghanaians? Why would you increase tariffs when salaries are the same? Uh, best, he doesn't know what's going on with Ghanaians. Uh, they should reverse the tariff increment issue immediately. We try to get through to PRC, but uh, we'll try and get through to them again uh, tomorrow, I guess. Go on, Ikaf. I'm against anything that oppresses black people in any part of the yeah. world. And therefore, for a black son to have used scriptures to support a system that dehumanized black people all over the world, he can't be my person. I disown him as an African. Even in the afterlife, you will still disown him. Governor Okai, a hearing tema, still talking about uh, uh, Jacobus Capitain. All right, he started a the conversation there. The domestic debt exchange program is a good policy in the right direction. My issue with government is the lack of consultation and education. Abdullah, with the National Cathedral and the whole Bruaha, it's imperative for the government to rethink, relook, and find ways to put the construction of the cathedral on hold. Abdullah Abdul Razak in Tamale. Jerry? Jerry of where? Of Ekunfi enjoying the show. 
Uh, you think Dr. Koto is your man for so president? Morning, okay, yeah. all right. Well, he will declare soon. Uh, more messages. Good morning. We are saying we should pool resources ourselves as a country so that we don't go to the IMF. One approach to that is e-levy. You think e-levy, we should take it seriously. Emmanuel Mensah says, good morning, Calf. The only public, major public monuments built after independence are Job 600 and Jubilee House. Really? Really? All the others are legacies of the colonial era, slave forts and castles. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Anachi will have a lot to say about that. The National Cathedral designed by a renowned Ghanaian architect will add to our monuments and enhance our tourism. The question is, is it now? Is it the time now when we need uh, money? And the, the, the National Cathedral, you know that Mr. Ajay has renounced his Ghanaian citizenship. Thank He's you. a British. Okay, all right. So uh, more information that I told you, the, 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 uh, Mr. Anachi would come through. How many troy ounces of gold are being traded for the how many metric ton, tons of oil? Uh, 41,000 metric tons is, is equivalent to $40 million worth of gold. But how many troy ounces of gold was worth the $40 million? These are significant questions that he's asking. How much gold has gone, all right, for the oil that we are talking about? Abubakar Abdullah, please tell our fathers to check their, share their contact. I need to get more in-depth knowledge from them in our various SHS. Ghana is an agricultural company, uh, economy. A Greek must be compulsory in all schools from crash. Mm. Instead of government... Uh, Concentrating on fixing the economy, they are interested in breaking the eight. Roxen from Abeka, farmers are rich in Europe and poor in Africa. Why is it so? This national cathedral policies, I don't support it. I don't even know if Nanada wants to become the head pastor of that national <laughs> cathedral. <laughs> Jonah Penka from Kikwira Tempani in the Upper East region of Ghana. I like the way Ghanaians throw their jabs, you know. Uh, and you think, you, you still want the Chinese to go. <laughs> Exo on the bridge. He says, Anachi is too diplomatic. Well, he's a lawyer. Lawyers are generally quite diplomatic, you know. Quite what, diplomatic. What is the meaning of being diplomatic? They say, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you, yeah. you speak with yeah, I, 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 temperate I, language, I guess. Oh. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I receive same messages. Yeah, that, they want you to be fighting. Yes, that's... No, uh, we, can't, we don't do yeah. that. <laughs> we don't, well, we're sorry, we don't do... Uh, tune, yes. tune elsewhere. Mm -hmm. If you want fighting yeah. panelists, yeah. please don't come here. <laughs> we'll tune you off. <laughs> Good morning, Ghana is... Oh, Ghana is not a miserable country, I beg you. Uh, intellectual talkatives, we have answers to everything. Well, NATO, NATO. Uh, no, no action, talk only. It's, it's, it's happening these days. But, uh, but if we don't talk on this show, this show will be very quiet. Please tell the lawyer to distribute his books for us to buy. Paul from Petway, we want you to write. Thank you. We want you to write. Good morning, Kath. I feel very sad every morning. I wake up every morning to go to the bush to attend to farmers, yet there are only two teachers handling KG to P6. Oh, wow. Two teachers. Some president feels it's more right to build a cathedral, a house of God. Serve mankind as you serve God. Okay. Yeah. Name of the town is Dema Ankasi. Dema Ankasi. in the oh. Tano South Municipality, Ahafo region. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Oh. This is a kindergarten. Oh. I mean, oh. Kaffee, let's be honest. What, what, what chances have children who go through this I tell you. have in future? What, what, what are their chances in life? I mean, they... I'm not a seer. They can make it, but no. realistically, what, yeah. what, what, what? I mean, that's why I say let's reprioritize. You know, Nubla is like mobile. Yes, let's uh, reprioritize. Oh, wow, yes. what a school! It's real. It should be on the front page of yeah. the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. And when you put it there, then you put the national and, cathedral and, and, beside it. Oh, okay. And for if, comparative if, yes, analysis, yes. If you look what at what we it, need, the guy, choose between. Choose. Okay, like a quiz. Yes. Okay. No, that's what the comment he made. Yeah. That the uh, and you mean these trustees and I, and I, I don't think that mm -hmm. about building a uh, cathedral at all costs. Wow, look at the school, man. Can and he said the it? cathedral can fund can solve thousands of these problems. Yeah, yeah. And this, this is the first step of educational. This PG. one is even better because it is not a school under a tree. tree. Okay, you know, it, so we, we have, have a, a long yeah, way to go. It's not good enough. This is just is off. If it rains, kiddies are going home. That storm problem. Hi, Calf, Richard Adade. Uh, you think this is the worst government you've seen? Posterity will judge them all? Well, to judge as well. All of us will be judged. Yeah, judgment day will be serious. Though. Guys, think about it, man. When we're in that queue, judgment day will be, Charlie, you know, will be small. We'll all be in the queue. Yes, Kafwe. <laughs> Charlie. Hmm. And then there will be no president, hey. no minister, no, no Kaya. Hey, hey. so my son, my, uh, uh, my son went to, to, to have his his uh, national identity document done. Mm -hmm. He said, when he came back, he debriefed me. I said, how was it? He said, I met corruption for the first time. Full force. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. He's 18. He said he saw envelopes. 
He was shocked. He got that seven. He left at six. He was the last guy to be said. Yeah. He said, Daddy, because I saw. Because he wouldn't pay. He said, I saw, I saw the face of corruption. Full force. Those were his words. Full force corruption. How are you exposed 19 year olds to this stuff, man? You know? No. <laughs> Charlie, judgment day will be serious. Let's think about our own salvation. Yeah. Forget about the other people. Just think about your own. Let's think about that cue. Somebody right. saying that. Ghanaian leaders are funny, oh. No, but you teachers didn't want read to that one. Cathedral. It's very educating. Okay, this one. This, this one? This yes, one? Yeah. Good morning to Okaf and our learned gentlemen. In reaction to repurchasing or retrieving those service companies because of continuing passing down to new subsequent foreign companies listed to benefit from tax holidays, it doesn't favor government. You know, you were talking about how, how governments, uh, the companies kind of re register and everything to, 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 to avoid uh, all those tax issues. Ghanaian leaders are funny, oh. Politicians want to build a national cathedral. It means, meanwhile, they don't go to church. <laughs> Yeah. They, they talk to pastors and prophets when they're about to run for, for, for president. Okay? They do that a lot. Calf, Ghana has lost to Madagascar. And what at all is wrong with our football association, Charlie? You've taken the thing to a whole new level. Mad, 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 mad. We're not even following the channel, Charlie. The cathedral matter chop hot. Let's review the National Cathedral policy. Good morning, Calf. Nice outfit there. You love it. I love it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Bars of gold. What is it? May pass somewhere. Or let's shine our eyes. It's a significant question. I, I understand. The Troy issues you're talking about, uh, how much gold has gone for oil? He wants to know what the weight is. Elijah Hamza, pig farm. Interesting times we live in. Because of the cathedral, our passport office is gone. Our scholarship secretariat is gone. 20, uh, 21 houses belonging to our judges are gone. A lot of state assets are all gone. As we speak, Ghana is slapped with a huge judgment debt to be paid all in the name of the cathedral. God have mercy. Ghana is seriously bleeding. We got our messages done. Thank you so much, all of you. Keep them coming in. 055 556 1034. Gentlemen, we are done for today. Well, when was the last time you were lashed? I can't remember. Primary school, you got it, eh? No, no, no. I got it primary school. I got it in uh, I went to the the experimental GSS, okay. the one that gave birth to the current yeah. system. Uh -huh. I got like I got last in got secondary, last year. secondary school too. Look, I went right. to, I went to a seminary and, and they last you in the seminary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You people were potential priests. Yeah, yeah. You you need to you need to be in line. I mean, you need to be equipped. Came you so, well. Yes, yes. We had a very good disciplinarian, Reverend Father Ephraim Mensa. Okay, it was very good. I All mean, right. we we still cherish him. But Kofi, before I drop my comment, yes, we're done. The, the young man or young man who said that we are NDC people, mm -hmm. and as I said personally, I made no. Uh, I don't hide my hide my affiliation with yeah. NDC, yeah. and as I mentioned, I will be contesting the whole way seat mm -hmm. on the ticket of NDC, no, the Mr. Mr. Mewu. If uh, I win the primary, yes, mm -hmm. and which I believe I'll win, and I'll contest against. But discussions here, yeah. Yeah. let us not colorize it with exactly. politics. It makes this this uh, the situation in which we are disappear. Yeah. We don't we we can't find solutions. We can't find the problem. Yeah. We, it makes us think that who. Oh, we are now MPP, NDC, UDP, yeah. etc. Yeah, they make it sound like an insult. Oh, yes, it's an NDC, my MPP, and, yes, right? no. it's not an insult. <laughs> First and foremost, right. it is Ghana. Yeah, indeed. Yes, so All let's right. talk about Ghana okay. and leave NDC, NPP out. I agree, hundred percent. Uh, we have a conversation on discipline next. That's why I was asking whether you have been caned in school. Have you? Were you caned? Oh, uh, many times. But you don't look like a naughty guy. You don't. No, but once you will be late, sometimes you didn't iron. Sometimes, you, especially in mathematics, in the morning, mental <laughs> arithmetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you, eh? Oh, Jesus uh, And you cried? That my teacher, Opare, Mr. Yeah. Opare, from your hometown, Huawei. Uh -huh. The history he taught me in primary four, uh -huh. I think, will be like a PhD level history. Is it? That's and it. He caned me. He caned you well. <laughs> may, he, may, may, may he continue to, <laughs> may to so rest, rest in perfect <laughs> peace. We have a conversation on um, indiscipline in our schools. How did we get here? It's coming up next. I also got my fair share of the lashes.